Hello class, today we're going to use AutoCAD 2019 to go ahead and make a metric part. So we're going to use this wrench as our project. In order for us to, to make this, we're going to use the following commands. We've got the line command. We're going to make uh, arcs, circles, okay? We're going to trim. Maybe offset. At least those commands will be used. We'll see what else gets used in a, in a bit. Now, this is a metric part. The AutoCAD is a US-based product. So when you click on Start Drawing, the default will be inches. We don't want this drawing in inches. We want it in metric. So we have to go to our templates. You have several choices on the, on the metric side of the house. You have ACAD ISO named plot styles, ACAD ISO named plot styles 3D, and ACAD ISO.DWT, as well as ACAD ISO 3D. We're going to pick ACAD ISO. ISO, because that's international, what was that? International Stan Organization of Standards. I know it should be IOS, correct? But they call themselves ISO. Okay, it doesn't stand for isometric. ISO does not stand for isometric. It stands for the metric standard of dimensioning and modeling, meaning it's going to be made in millimeters. Okay? So we pick that and we're in. Some visual clues that you are in the metric system. If I go home, my box, oh, actually my box doesn't change in here. If I was an inventor, it would change, but not in this one. So we'll stay out of that conversation. If I look at my object on my screen, do I have anything that tells me I'm in the correct units? If I type in units, it's decimal and millimeters. That's your, that's your primary clue that you're in the correct units of measurement. Okay? So if I accidentally started the wrong way, if I go file new, and I don't pay attention to my template and I pick automatically ACAD.DWT and I go into units here, I type it in, I'll see decimal inches. That'll be my clue. So if you do get confused and you're trying to figure out what units am I in, just type in units on your keyboard and it'll pick it up. Okay? So we are in the metric system that's over here drawing two. And now the question is how to begin this thing. There's more than one way to do anything as we learn. As they say, the skin of CAD. C-A-D. So I'm going to go and I'll start with the circle. The circle command, there's several choices. You have center radius, center diameter, two point, three point, tangent, tangent, radius, tangent, tangent, tangent. I guarantee we're probably going to be using some of the tangents later on. But for now, <clears throat> I'm going to pick center radius versus center diameter only because I'm given radii here and I don't want to do the math to get the diameters. Got it? So I'm going to pick center radius. Now, you cannot snap to a center. You just type in 0, 0 for your first circle. Okay? So the radi radius of the circle, I'm going to type in the number. We'll start with the one over here. Now, we have several radii to choose from. R13 is actually the arc radius for this inner opening. R16 is giving me the radius of that large diameter. So that's the one I'm going to pick. So I'm going to type in 16 and hit Enter. So that's my first object. Now, my second object, I'm actually going to draw a line so I could get to that other end. The length of this from center to center is 100, so I'm going to just type that in and then hit enter to exit my command. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle again. I'm going to pick that end point. You saw that green grip. When it's square, it's end point. When it's an X, it's intersection. And we can change them on the fly. So this one right now, the radius, this one is 15. It actually is not the same as the other one. So this one is 15. This one's 15. This one's 16. Okay, they're not the same. Now, your snaps. 
you're going to have to learn how to control them. Down at the bottom, you're going to see the unit, that, like if I'm in model space or paper space. Pa paper space, we'll discuss a different day. Model space is what you're in. Then you have the grid, display a grid, don't display a grid. Grid is the, the little, those, all those little squares behind you when you look, in the, um, look at the screen. And then you have polar snap settings, grid snap settings, and snap settings. When you click in here, you get the dialog box called Drafting Settings, okay? Right now our snaps are off and that's what we want. Polar tracking, we have it set to 90 degrees. We might want to change that, but not today. I'll do a separate video on that. Object snap, right now it's endpoint, center, intersection, intersection. I'm sorry, intersection, extension. That's what I meant to say, extension over here. In this project, you might have to find tangent, but to be honest, we're going to do that using the circle tangent option. So these are the things just to look at for now. I'll, I'll do another video on how to handle that later. Next, I know you know offset because we discussed that one before. Offset is found where? I'm going to type that in here. It's under the modify, modify toolbox inside there. It's in the Modify Toolbox. The Line command is in the Draw Toolbox. That's this guy. The Draw Toolbox. Modify Toolbox contains Offset, Trim, okay? I'm going to capitalize Draw just so you see that. Draw Toolbox has Line, arcs and circles okay so today we're going to do a mix and match of the of use utilizing the draw toolbox with the modify toolbox okay so i'm going to go to offset offset looks like a sideways u and i'm going to offset to make this the neck the the center piece the 11 that you see where i'm, I'm moving my mouse at so it's the offset distance, if I typed in 11 divided by 2, okay, 11 divided by 2, it'll actually offset that distance. So I put in the equation versus the number, okay? So you can do that. Some people ask, can I do that? The answer is yes. So I don't have to know that it's 5.5. You don't have to pull out your calculator. You can actually do the math on the screen. Next, I've got this radius here, which is this radius here. And I've got this radius here. And I've got ditto for the bottom. This one's a radius of 47. See that? And here we have a radius of 23. Because they don't give us the radius on top, we're going to assume that it's the same. Meaning radius 47 down here, radius 47 up there. Remember, back to our comments about the word assume. We don't want to do that because it, it's spelled ASS -S of you and me. So we always want to make sure the customer is aware of that. Typically, if we're going to say radius 47 and we, we're trying to tell the customer it's on both sides, we would use the words TYP at the end. So if I was going to type it out, just so you see what it would look like typed out, it would be radius 47, sorry, not 45, and in parentheses it would be TYP. <coughs> TYP spelled out just like that. You could spell out typical, but usually it's just TYP. And it, you might see a drawing where it says that in, in parentheses or sometimes even outside of parentheses. And the radius will always be an R. Okay? Versus diameter, which would be might spell out DIA, or they'll have the circle with a slash through it. There's a couple of symbols out there that, that'll do that. In our case, we don't have diameters. We've just got lengths and radiuses. So to uh, to make this, I'm going to use another command, which I'm going to type in now, called fillet. Last class, we discussed chamfer. Now we're going to do the other command that's found in the same place, which is fillet. OK? Some people want to call it fillet. I'm like, nope, it's not a fillet. But I do jokingly call it a fillet mignon. 
So there, there's my bad joke for the day. Recorded for life. So here we go. So we're going to use three modify commands today and the draw commands up here. So if I move over here, the fillet command is in modify. What the fillet command does for me, it allows me to make beautiful arts. We'll see if this works. It might not. We're going to try. So we go to fillet. And then instead of clicking on stuff, I'm going to tell you to stop yourself and look at the bottom of the screen. The bottom of the screen, you have undo polyline radius, 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 or by the way, radius, and there's trim and multiple. When I click on radius, that's where I can actually identify what radius I want my fillet to be in. So I'm going to do this up here. Instead, I'm going to go to the fillet command. I just canceled out of the command by hitting the escape key so I can show you this. The other way to get those, those commands is to go to right, right mouse button and click on radius. So right now, the, the default radius, if you've never put one in, is zero. And that's why sometimes you might actually be able to use the fillet command as a quick trim command. Because if you have your radius of zero, you can pick two objects and it'll literally just trim it to their intersection, which is kind of nice. It's a quick trim. But in our case, we actually want to put a fillet in. So the fillet we're going to use is 47. That's the radius. We're going to hit enter. And now, before you hit another object, you notice how the arc is retained here. Do you see that? See how the arc is retained? You see this arc? That means we want to retain the arc here. The default is to trim, meaning that it'll put the arc in and wipe out stuff. And you'll be like, oh no, I gotta redraw a circle. I'm too lazy for that and I want you to be too. So right mouse button and where you see trim, right now it's set to trim. That's the default setting, which actually 90% of the time you want it that way. This is the unique time that you don't want it that way. So you would pick no trip. So when I pick my first object and I pick my second object, look at that. Is that not beautiful? Watch what it does. Is that not beautiful? Done. Okay? When you hit enter, it takes you back into the command and you can do the top line with a circle. And it retains everything else. Now you can trim if you want to, or we can just continue on, go back to fill it, right mouse button, change the radius, because the radius on the other side is different. Radius of 23, remember that. And it's still set to no trim, so that's the easy part. You hit enter or space bar and hit the other side. Okay? Then I would say trim. Now you want to trim once. So you have I like to just do my trims together. So I'm gonna go to trim. Now, with trim, I'm, of all things, I'm going to pick only the arcs. Only the arcs. Only the arcs. Now, the way I like to remind people how trim works, let me escape one more time. The first thing you're selecting in, tr uh, sorry, wrong command, hold on. The first thing you're trying to select when you hit trim is what you're going to cut, I'm sorry, what your cutting edge is going to be. Meaning, what am I going to cut with? Okay, what, what is going to be used as my knife if I'm thinking of cutting bread? I always like to use bread as my example because I like to eat. I imagine you do too, so I like to say, when, when you want to cut bread, you get a hold of the bread, you line up the knife, and you slice. Lining up the knife is what this is. I'm lining up where my edge is going to be to cut with. They say, if I do a little F2, the way they say it, select cutting edges. Okay? That's what they say here. Now, some people will say, well, I should select all the cutting edges. And I'm like, no, actually, you don't. You want to be a little surgical in what you select to cut with. In this case, I only want to cut in relationship to the arc. 
When you are done selecting the items you're going to cut with, you must hit the enter key or it's still going to be selecting cutting edges. When you are done selecting your cutting edges, you can right mouse button, hit the space bar, hit the enter key, any of the three work for the next step, which is select the objects to trim. What you do is you select them on the side you want to remove. You select on the side you want to remove. Not the other side, otherwise it will remove the wrong side. So I want to remove that side. I want to remove that side. That side. That side. And then I hit on it. Now you're going to notice I left my line in the middle. Okay, I'm actually going to convert that to a center line later. That's why I'm leaving that line there. I'm not deleting it. So now we have our basic shape. We retain our curves, which we wanted to. And now here we have basically the outer shape on this side, the outer shape on this side. We have the neck and the, and the arcs connecting this neck, the handle part, to the ends. Now we want to get this in. Do we know what angle this thing is set to? 17, 17 degrees, right there. We're going to focus on one side. Some people like to try to jumble everything together and I keep telling them stop it. It's enough just to do one side. So we're going to focus in on this side, which is focusing in on this side over here. Yeah, I can't quite move that the way I want to. But we're going to focus in on this side right here. Okay? Now, there's a few things we've got to assess. We have 17 degrees. We have a center, and boy, this does not look like it's dead center, does it? Here's my center, and this arc looks nowhere close to being a circle in the middle of this thing. Okay? We have 17, but they didn't tell us how long it is. <laughs> so let's start with the middle, because that we can draw. We're going to go to the line command, and I'm actually going to just draw a line out here. Instead of trying to be very, 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 very particular, I'm just going to draw a line out here, and I'm going to hit escape. And I'm going to use a new command that I'm going to type down here called rotate. And that's also found in the modified toolbar. Okay? The rotate command. So I'm going to go to Modify, I'm going to select Rotate. I'm going to select my line, the little line I just drew. I'm going to right mouse button, and it's going to say, specify base point. Base point for the Rotate command is where you're going to rotate the object, meaning the hinge. Okay? So if you take your arm, and wave, okay, where your elbow meets, that's the rotation point of your arm. Your elbow, you're rotating your arm. That's what you're selecting. Where are you going to rotate from? So I'm going to select here because I want to rotate from there. Now, it's going to ask you to then rotate angle. Okay? Angle. <clears throat> I just canceled out of the can command by accident. No, I didn't. Okay. Down here where it says specify rotation angle. So I need to type in the angle. Now, we're going to have to remember out of geometry what that means. 17 degrees here is also 17 degrees here, okay? And that's out of geometry. What, what's that called? Something about complementary angles? Part of that conversation with the geometry class? Or trig, trigonometry? So I'm going to type in 17, and I'm going to hit enter. Okay, now that worked beautifully, which I'm annoyed with. So let me undo. Undo is you enter. 
The only reason it worked beautifully is because I had my mouse positioned exactly where it belonged, which was down here. But sometimes your mouse is up here. And when you type in 17, it still goes down there. Now, why does it go down there? Even though I had my mouse, let me undo again. I want you to see what, it, what it's doing. How does a protractor work? This time, whoops, I picked the wrong center. Did you notice that? Got to pick the center center. I knew which direction it was going to go in naturally, but that's, that was why I made my mistake. I should have pointed it up here. And then when you type in 17, you should have been surprised that it jumped down there. How does a protractor work? I'm going to have to pull up a picture of one, so give me a moment here. A protractor out of good old class, uh, geometry class, I'm going to say, looks like this. It's got a center, and nowadays they put 0 to 180 both ways. Back in the day, it was only 0 to 180 right to left. Okay, everything is right to left. The default rotation is right to left. So it naturally went down 17. The reason I want you to remember that is because of the other one. 17 down. It's going somewhere else. So just remember that. Here it was easy because it automatically went the way you really wanted it to go. In reality, you might want it to go the other way. So if you want to rotate in the opposite direction, I wonder how we would do that. What I have to remember, the seven, I'd have to know like the 360 degrees minus 17. I'm too lazy for that. So if I go to rotate and I want it to go in the opposite direction, negative 17 to make it go up, okay? Opposite of a standard pro protractor rotation, okay? Just remember that. If your object rotates the wrong way, that means that you have to put, let's say, normally you'll want to pick like 17 or 18 or 19, whatever number, and it rotates in, in the direction it rotates in. And you're like, no, 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 I really wanted it to rotate the other way. All you have to do is take that number and make it a minus. Get it? And it'll rotate in the opposite direction. Put that in your notes, please. Whoops, I undid too, too far. You undo do too far, just redo, R-E-D-O. Type it in and just type it in. So I'm going to rotate again. I'm going to pick my object, right mouse button, pick my center, and type in 17. Okay, now I'm going to go to offset again. I'm going to offset. Hmm, 17 divided by 2. I'm not going to take out my calculator. I'm just going to type it, 17 divided by 2. And I'm going to pick my object. It'll go up, pick my object, and go down. Okay? That's it. Now, the fun part. How deep do you think this line goes? I mean, I really don't know. Our customer omitted giving us either the length of this object, where the length of this cut goes in. So we honestly don't know where this goes. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is draw a line connecting this bottom part to this part, because I know that's through the center. And I'm going to guess. Now we all know what guessing means, right? I'm going to assume a dimension. If I physically have the print in front of me, right now it's all digitally on the screen, I would literally take a piece of paper and put my little ticky lines on something I know, for example, 11. I know that this is a unit of measurement is 11. And I would take my little ticky line and go across here and see, maybe is it 11 plus 11? Maybe. I don't know. So I'm going to just 
try to emulate that action here on the screen, which is a little difficult to do, but I'm going to try anyways. So there's my little, little line. Okay, I'm going to change its color just to uh, emphasize and change its um, thickness. Just to emphasize its uniqueness, okay, in this conversation. Line weight, by the way, is a setting, and you have to turn it on. The default is off. Okay? So I'm going to guesstimate. I'm going to move my little line to here. Now I'm going to have, oh, geez, I have to guesstimate this. Now I have to rotate this here. That can be a challenge, so let's try that. We're going to rotate. I'm going to rotate. I type the command in. Sorry. I'm going to take this line. I'm going to rotate it. What angle? Wow. Uh, we could try 360 minus uh, 17. Hmm. And then I get an error message. Requires valid numeric angle. Second point or op option keyboard. So you're telling me 360 minus 17 doesn't work here. Okay, that mathematical solution I gave you for the one thing doesn't work in every command. Okay, would be nice, but not today. So what's my plan B? My plan B is called reference. Right mouse button, reference. What reference does, is I'm going to pick the endpoint of my intersection, go to my out, outer endpoint, and literally manually drag my line down to be a line. Reference is a beautiful tool. Absolutely beautiful tool. It allows me to intentionally rotate things. Those of you in descriptive geometry, reference is your friend if anybody's in that class. So now I'm going to copy this over, and this is at endpoint and endpoint, these two lines. Okay, we can tell it's not 11 plus 11, right? Because that went too far. Notice that? I can pick this line, right mouse button, go to its properties, and literally change open this up. Uh, let's see what we got here about my line. I've got geometry. It's giving me its, its literal location. Let me see if I could change the length. Maybe I'll divide it by two. Make it five and a half. It didn't let me change its length. You notice that? keep showing 11 here. If I X out of this, it didn't change the length. I can drag it back. Now watch this. Let go of your mouse when you do this. And type in 5.5. See that? Undo. Let me show you again. Undoing. Click on a line. Click on an end grip. End grip. Click on that. And now I'm going to change. I'm going to drag it back a bit. See that? It's staying aligned. That's not a problem. So don't, don't rotate it or move it. Change it to 5.5, which is 11 divided by 2. Okay. So that's a little bit past. So maybe it's that. So what are we going to do with our customer? Are we going to inform them of that we're randomly deciding how long this thing is. Now, I was very, that I really spent a lot of time on this thing. I did it because I want to show you how to use the commands. In reality, I probably would have like extended it to midpoint and said, I've extended this to a little, the midpoint, but if I zoom in, it doesn't look like it's at midpoint. See how it's a little off midpoint? That's the only reason I didn't go to midpoint. Sorry. So I'm going to copy, or not copy, I'm going to move this line 
Oh, the move command. Let's add that to the list of commands. Move. Where's that found? Modify toolbar. I go to the move command. The move command looks like, to me personally, like the north, south, east, west symbol you find on a map. You see that? It's got arrows going in all directions, in four directions. That's the move command. So I'm actually going to move this line from endpoint to endpoint, okay? Then I'm going to grip and drag this line out. I'm going to erase these two by making a crossing window. And you're going to notice I'm going left to right. And you see the blue field? When it's blue, it will only erase, erase what is 100% inside the box that you see on the screen. If I go right to left, the box is green. It will erase whatever is touching the box as well as anything inside the box. Get it? So 99% of the time, you're going to want to make a surgical erase, which means left to right, where the field is blue. And I only want to erase only what's inside my box, nothing else. So I click, and then I can hit the delete button on my keyboard. I don't have to go to my erase toolbar for this. I can if I want to, but I'm just telling you, you can actually do it on the fly. On the fly, I can make a crossing window and hit the delete button on my keyboard. I don't have to go to the erase command. Got it? This product has the same issue every other product has. If my mouse is too high, it'll jump to another toolbar. Just like in SolidWorks Inventor and every other product. Remember how it would jump to another option? So you have to go to the item, drop into that toolbox, and then move over. If you're going to use the erase, and the erase looks like a pencil with an eraser on the end of it. Okay? So now we did erase, right? And I add that to the list of commands we've gone through. Okay? Lots of commands. Now I'm going to take this. I'm going to use my grip. When it's hot and cold, blue is, blue is cold when you, you haven't touched it. When you click on it and it turns red, that's hot. Make sense? Then I can drag with it. Or I can go to modify, and instead of using trim, I can use the extend command. Extend command does the same thing. And extend is the same as trim. First you select what you're going to extend to. Just like in trim, first you do is first you select what you're going to cut with. Got it? When you've done that, you hit enter and then you pick the object you want to extend to it. To me that's too much work. I'm way too lazy for that. But sometimes you have to use extend. Okay? If you can use your grips, use your grips. If you can't, use use the command, extend. And that's also in the modified toolbar. That's also in the modified toolbar. Okay? Grips is in nothing. Grips is not in any command toolbar set. All right? So when I talk about grips, get a grip. <laughs> I mean you click on the object, and those are those squares that you see. And when you click on one of those squares, they turn red, they turn on. They're turning hot, hot and cold. Because to me, blue is a color that represents cold, like winter. Or like in faucets. I came out of the plumbing industry, so faucets always have blue for cold water and red for hot. Okay? So that's how we think of it, hot and cold. That's as good as it's going to get as far as that shape. Now, the arc. Ha, this one's going to be fun. How do we get the arc? All right, let's try. We're going to go into the arc command. And wow, do we have a bunch of choices. Hmm. This is a lot of choices. So we have start, center, end. Start, center, angle. I listed arc as one of Yeah, there's arc. Back to arc. We've got start center length. 
the length of the arc, but it's linear, not, not arc length. FYI, if you're going to ask me that, but go ahead. Start and radius. Oh, you went down the line. I didn't get that far. Good. Start and angle, start and direction, start and radius. For this purpose, I think we're going to do start and radius and see what we get. Center, start and, we don't care about the rest. We're going to go with start and radius. Now remember, with every single command, you can always just leave your mouse there for a moment. And it actually gives you a little explanation of the command. So as you work on, on AutoCAD, just learn to pause. And you'll hear me during lab time repeatedly tell you to get your hand off the mouse. Because you've heard that already. Because sometimes you have to stop moving the mouse in order to see this stuff. And sometimes you have to type something in. In this case, if I keep moving my, my mouse, I'm never going to get to wait. Come on. Pause and just wait. See how long it takes? takes a while. So if you move your mouse again, that this, this nice big picture showing you what it's going to do won't appear. Annoyingly, I cannot move my mouse into that picture to discuss this. I'm going to try to see the minute I walk, you see that? I move away from it. it. The picture goes away. You notice that? So I'm going to verbally show you. See how it says point one, point two, and then there's number three. Okay? Point one and two, you'll notice which direction it goes in. Point one and two, you notice it goes bottom to top, and which way is the arc arcing? Point one is at the bottom. It arcs toward which direction? I'm going to turn around and you're going to watch me. One, and then which way am I turning, guys? I'm waving which way? Counterclockwise, correct? Am I going counterclockwise? Because it's working like a protractor. Back to that conversation. A protractor works counterclockwise. It naturally works right to left. Now I'm facing you the wrong way when I say this. Right to left. Got it? That's what it's doing. So when you're picking your radius, you start at the bottom and go to the top. If I did it right, which I obviously didn't. I did something wrong. So hold on. Let me try it one more time. Start and radius. I click on it. Start, radius, end, radius. Oh, what did I forget to do, people? I forgot to type in the radius, right? Okay, so let me type it in. What's the radius? 13. Done. And it drops it in. That's it. Cool? That's method A. I say A because that's the one you want to use. Because we're all lazy. Again, arc, start and radius. Start down here, go up here, move your mouse out. Uh-oh, I did it again. I did something wrong. One more time. What am I in? Draw. Arc, start and radius. Start here, go to here. Okay, specify radius of arc. It's, at, it's showing you at the bottom instead of visually in the screen. Uh, the radius is 13. And you hit enter. That's it. Okay. The other method. I can go to draw, and I can draw a circle. Now, a circle has tangent, tangent, radius in it. That would be the other method. Not a good choice here, to be honest. Tangent, tangent. See that? That's going to be a tough one. 13. See what it did? That one's a tough one. It is technically a radius of 13, but it, it kind of went for tangent to different points. So I would say forget about that one because that, that sometimes people want to do that one. I'm like, nah, just do start and radius. Start, end point. Start, end, I'm sorry, start, end, and then radius of 13. Every time you'll get it right. Now, just for kicks and giggles, go the other way. I told you the way you should go. So if I started here instead and went down here, which way is that I'm wanting to go? See that? It wants to go where? 
Where does that arc want to go, guys? See it? Yeah. On the opposite side. Because of how a protractor works, right to left. So if this happens to you, just understand you picked the wrong first point. Very common occurrence. I did it right the first time. It's under draw. And sometimes I've, I've got to teach myself to do it wrong first. That way I can show you the mistake. You go bottom to top because I want the arc to be on the outside. And then you type in that arc. That's it. The rest is trim. This line, let me see it. I'm going to jump to trim just to show you something else. I'm going to trim, I want the circle and these two lines to trim to. Got it? I'm going to right mouse button, I'm going to get rid of this, I'm going to get rid of that, I'm going to get rid of that, and, and gosh darn it, gee willikers, stronger words to follow. What's wrong? Why will it not let me trim off this line? Does that line intersect the cutting edges at all? No. If you look at it, the blue outline, see that blue on the screen? That blue look is your cutting edges. That line that I'm saying that I want to delete, it says does not intersect with cutting edges. So I cannot use the trim command for this. If I were an inventor in SOLIDWORKS, we have a different conversation. But in this product, no. So I just have to click on that line, and I have to delete it. Now I can erase it. I can go to Modify and Erase. But notice what that requires me to do. Oh, i got to move my mouse up here. Oh, i got to drop my mouse and drag it over. And then i got to hit the Erase button. I love the sarcasm in my voice there. Oh, and then I gotta go over here and hit it. And then I gotta hit enter to finish the command. You know how long that takes? Oh, geez, remember, I'm cheap and lazy. I don't wanna do either. I wanna be the most efficient cat person, so what I'm gonna do is click on the object and hit the delete keyboard key on my keyboard. Got it? Just like that. I pick one I want to get rid of, and I hit the delete, delete button on my keyboard. One more method, because I can click on it, right mouse button, but that means I just made an extra step, which I don't like, and then I can hit erase. But if you're mouse dependent, <laughs> that's the way I'm going to phrase that. You're mouse dependent people, that's how to use the mouse. Those of you that, that have access you know, you're comfortable using your keyboard, trust me, you'll operate so much faster if you utilize both your keyboard and your mouse. Okay? The power of, of using both. Click, delete. Got it? That's fast. Go to modify, pick the command that takes too long. Got it? Efficiency is the number one game. That's what I mean about be lazy. I really mean be efficient. Okay, that one's done. Let's scooch over to the side and rinse and repeat our ac actions for a different side. All right, so I'm going to go draw. I'm going to go to the line command. I'm going to start in the middle. We've done this before. I'm going to draw it out there somewhere. Who cares where? Hit the escape key on my keyboard or the enter key or the right mouse button and enter. Okay, I'm going to hit escape. Got it? I'm going to hug the escape key. I tend to hug it with my left thumb. You always see me working like this. And because I know most of these commands by memory, sadly, you'll, I type a lot of my commands in because I don't want to hunt them down. I don't want to find them in the toolbar. The line command is L. So if the line command is in the draw toolbar, or you just type in L. Or line, if you're really fast at typing. All of the key commands for all the commands. Oh, if I leave my mouse there, I've got to teach myself to leave my mouse. Okay. Oh, it doesn't give it to me. It doesn't tell me the shortcut command. Huh? It doesn't tell me. I thought it used to tell you the key command. I guess not. 
So arc, I actually would type in arc. Circle, I can just type in the letter C and hit enter. So if I'm out here and I just hit C enter, that throws me in the circle command. L enter, that's the line command. T enter gives me a couple of choices. So when you hit T, all the different options come up. So you can choose something. If I type in TR, there's trend. Okay, and just right on the keyboard. O, offset is a default. You have to type more letters for the other stuff or you can pull them off of here. Got it? F for fillet. R for rotate. Whoops, I, I went too fast, sorry. Oh, I was redraw. I take that back. I was redraw. R O for rotate. Okay, redraw is a nice feature if you want to just clean up your drawing really fast. When you start putting a bunch of dimensions in, sometimes the video graphics card isn't able to keep up with you. And redraw helps refresh the page. Okay, so if you see your image looking a little weird, just redraw it. I'll enter. Okay? That's a video card issue. Offset, rotate, and for move. Sorry, I gotta go slower. And the first option is move. The other ones are different options. See? Okay? E for erase. E. First, the default. If you just hit E, enter, it's erase. Everything else, you gotta pull down menu. Got it? Play with that. Take every letter in the alphabet. I don't care. Mess with it. I learned AutoCAD by by basically trying to break it. Okay? I just jumped on there and said, all right, I'm just see what it does. Back then, I had to type all my commands in. That was a long time ago. Today, it's a little easier for you. Okay? Cool. Next. I mean, uh, I forgot. What am I going to do next? Hmm. I threw my line in, and now I want to something with the letter R. Look through my list. Rotate. I'm going to rotate this puppy. Head on her. Click on that end point. Whee! Oh, boy. What a number. 163? Are you kidding me? We know our math. We already know what the answer is. What is it? 17. Because 163 plus 17 equals 180. Okay, so mentally we know that. If I type in 163, I'm going to get, holy cannoli, where did that go? If that happens, okay, that you'll know what happened and why. Okay? So you can undo, you enter for undo, or if I type in you, I'll leave it there for a minute. U enter is undo, goes inside. U N is units. Okay? Not United Nations, at least not in this class. Okay. Rotate. Hit enter. Click on it. Enter. Position. 17. It automatically went the correct way because that's how a protractor works. Right to left. So rotate it up. Okay. Offset. If I just type in OF, that works. If I type in O, yeah, that works too. Hit enter. Got it? Offset. Oh, I forgot. How do I do that? I have to do 13? No, I gotta pull out my calculator. No, I'm just gonna type in 13 divided by 2. Remember that. It does work here. Click. Yes. Click. Yes. Done. That's beautiful. Got it? Same problem as here, which annoys me because I have the exact same problem on this side as I had on that side, so I'm going to have to guess. Guessing is never a good thing to do, but you know what? I'm actually not going to change its position because if I drew a line vertically, now I'm guessing it's kind of close. <laughs> but remember, I'm guessing. So is guessing going to work for me? No. I'm going to tell the customer what I did. They're going to verify whether or not it's acceptable. They have to decide. I cannot decide for them. The arc. 
<clears throat> now that I know where I'm at, do I really need to have that line in there to draw my arc? Heck no. I can just jump straight into the arc command. And it's, uh, I forgot, what was it? Start and radius, right? Because that's what we have. We have a start point. Oh, okay. So I have to start and, did I do that right, guys? No, I didn't do that right, because which way is the arc going to appear, guys? The arc going to appear, oh, it's on the wrong side. Remember, protractors, protractors, just like a protractor. Start and radius. Start and, and if I want my radius out there, I, that's how I do it. I pick the top point first, bottom point second, so my arc is on the outside. And the radius is 9. Done. Okay? I did not need that line in the middle. I eliminated a step. Now I can go ahead and trim. Pick my arc, pick my two lines, right mouse button, select the objects I want to get rid of, right mouse button, enter. That one I use my mouse for instead of my keyboard for. Oops, did I miss something? Yeah, I missed this arc. So right mouse button, repeat, repeat trim, pick my two lines again, right mouse button, pick what I want to get rid of, right mouse button, enter. Now I have my basic shape. I've not taught you yet how to dimension, <clears throat> but this is the object you want to turn in for me. I did actually went ahead and erased everything just as a clean object. Now the next thing, how do I send this to my client? I want them to see it. I just didn't drop any dimensions. I'm your client, by the way. So I want you to just, just send it to me with possibly a notation telling, telling me something's wrong with it, maybe. But you know what? Honestly, in order for us to do that with this guy, we'd have to actually go through showing you dimensioning. I'm not going to do that for this video. What I do want to show you is how to send something to somebody as a PDF. I think I'll do that within this video is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and include it in this thing. You have the ability to print. Now people will say print, it's called plot. We use the word plot in AutoCAD instead of print because AutoCAD serves the architectural industry which uses plotters. Plotters are large format printers. Okay, that's all. So the word plot means print. So put that in your head as a synonym. Plot means print, print means plot. Got it? So when I go to plot, I have choices of how I'm going to plot. I'm going to plot to PDF. Plot to PDF, which is Microsoft Print to PDF. Okay? They also have DWG to PDF. I just say Microsoft Print to PDF. The key is what you're going to print. The paper would be letter, because we want to print on letter-sized paper. Whether it's a metric drawing or an inch drawing, we can only print a quote-unquote letter. We can only print a quote-unquote letter. Instead of picking this display, I like to be very, very particular of what I print. So I pick window. And then my, my dialog box disappears so I can make a window of what I want to print. I like to center my plot, and as I do all these things, it appears like this tiny little thumbnail preview shows me how it's going to print. I don't want it to print this way on its side. I want to maximize the print, so I want it to print sideways. You know what that means? Portrait versus landscape. So I've got to go into properties. And the source is letter. If I go to general, I don't have a choice. I don't have a choice in ports. User defined, custom paper, printable area. I'm going to be printing letter, but the letter is set up to default by, what do you call this? Uh, not portrait, it's, um, I'm sorry, it's default is lance. I'm sorry, right now the default is portrait. When I go into property, I don't seem to have a clean place to fix that. So I wonder if it's in this main dialog. Oh, you caught it already. Sorry. Good. Good. No, that's good. That's the point. You caught it. Thank you. It's over here, people. 
in the lower right corner. It's a common question I get. Drawing orientation, portrait, landscape. If you pick landscape. You always want to maximize your view. I have not taught you how to plot to scale yet. That's a different video. I'll do that in a different day. But for now, at least you can print or plot. And you're going to plot to PDF. Before you ever plot, I'll show you these on another day, because these matter for certain things I'd like you to do. But for today, I just want you to be able to email me a PDF of your drawings, whatever drawings I tell you to do. And that you want to preview, because you want to make sure it looks the way you want me to get it. Okay, I don't want a, a bad print. I want something sent to me that looks like this. So you always preview what you're going to send me so that I don't have to send you an email that says, can you send this to me again? Because you sent me a postage stamp or, I mean, let me see how I can, uh, um, I'm going to fake it out a little bit. You sent me something that looks like this. I don't want you to send me something that looks like this. I want you to send me something that looks like this. Got it? Okay. So review this video for printing. And then when you hit OK, it's going to ask you where do you want to save it. I do recommend you save this by using the word wrench. But I would like you to add your name to it, please. So in my case, it would be wrench underscore now, my first name is just as unique as my last name, so I could use Antigone Sherris, or I can, if I'm really lazy, which I am, uh, A Sherris will be just fine. A underscore Sherris. Got it? So, and then I hit save, and that's it. And that is what I would email to me, my, myself, and I. <laughs> in my case. But that's what you're going to email me. Do not send me drawing files. Okay, you only will send me PDFs. Okay? PDFs I can open up anywhere. On my uh, Note 8, on my Surface Pro, anywhere. And on both devices I can mark up the drawings. But more often than not I'll be using my Note 8 to mark everything up. Because on here I have the pen feature and I can literally redline everything and just email it back to you for what corrections you need to make. Got it guys? So for now you're only sending me these images, you're not sending me any dimensions. I can roughly assess whether or not it's correct by looking at the image. As, especially after I see enough wrenches I'll kind of tell a wrench is wrong. Cool. So, and that ends this video. <laughs>